Hi, I'm Sue Brune, the CEO of the CMTA, and I am here today with Chris Oviatt, who is just qualified for the Adaptive US Open. She's a golfer, and we're here to hear her story. Hi, Chris, how are you? I'm well, thank you. Nice to meet you. Great, nice to meet you too, and thanks so much for taking time for us today. Absolutely. I want to hear a little bit about your story. So tell me about where you're from and, and what was it like growing up as Chris Oviatt? Well, I'm from Milwaukee, Oregon. Um, I was born in Cay Falls. Um, but I played softball growing up, which I think has helped me greatly um, to be able to play golf with a little balance issue. And I've been playing golf since 1993, so 30-ish years. And I think that helped me stay strong and I'll say keep the disease away until I wasn't as active. Because I played also basketball, soccer, but my dad was a very good golfer. And um, I played with him periodically. We played the parent-child as a tournament, another tournament. And, um, you know, and then I found a ladies group in 1993 that played on Saturdays. Okay. And so I worked during the week and then played golf on Saturdays and then just kept playing. And so what is it about golf that, that's exciting and fun for you? For me, it's, it lets me be me. I, I mean, I don't have to uh, pretend to be somebody I'm not. I'm just myself. And when did it get to be a really serious passion? Because obviously you're, you're a, a very serious golfer. <laughs> I am, but it's, I think it's always been a serious... Uh, I, I'll, say, I'll say 2015 when the Fisher family bought Arrowhead. Um, Marsha, who caddies for me when I travel, encouraged me to play in bigger events rather than just here all the time. And so with that, you know, then I got a little more passion for the game to, to play more often, play at a higher level. Mm -hmm. And how often do you play in tournaments? Um, well, that's a good question. There, because tournaments, they vary. Um, but I play here three to four times a week. Okay. Uh, tournaments, like this month, I just have a couple. Some months, last month I had three back to back to back. And they were all adaptive. The qualifier and then another adaptive event and then another three day adaptive event. And I am really loving the adaptive golf world. So tell me a little bit more about the adaptive golf world and how you came to that. Well, I got, when I got into the adaptive open last year, um, then I found this year I want to play in more events. I want to get to meet more people. And, and these events were in California and in Arizona, so they were relatively close. Uh, there, there's one in Oregon later this year for amputees, but other people can play, so I'm going to play in that in September. Mm -hmm. But to see the people overcome their disabilities is just makes me want to play even more. Mm -hmm. So tell me about the event in July. I know you have an exciting event oh, coming the, up. Oh, uh, the Adaptive Championship. Um, that will be in Newton, Kansas. And my goal is to finish in the top five. Because if I finish in the top five, I don't have to qualify. And last year I finished in the top seven with one bad day. I'm going to try to avoid that bad day. So when you talk about adaptive golf for you, what does that, what does that mean? The only challenges I have is just getting around. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Walking on the green, for example, I have to I use my putter upside down as, my, as a cane, or I'll take my cane with me. Um, it, or hills, there are just certain parts of the course I have to be careful mm -hmm. with compared to other people. I have some balance issues, um, so my swing's a little slow, but it keeps me on my feet. So, And I do lose my balance, but I don't fall that often, which is a good thing. So I wanted to know a little bit about what it feels like to have CMT and what is it, what is it, what impact has it had on your life? I don't have any pain, so I feel blessed in that sense. I do get tired of tripping. Um, I trip all the time uh, and my fingers don't work the way that I want them to. Mm -hmm. I feel pretty blessed because I can still do what I love. So I noticed that you wear braces. On yes. Do you want to talk about those a little bit? Yes, these ones are from TurboMed, and I won them in a drawing, I want to say 2021, whenever that, I think it was 2021. It was December, and um, they were giving away five free pair, and my name got called. I think, you know, 
I don't like attention and so when you walk differently than other people people are gonna stare and people are gonna mm -hmm. um, say things or what have you although I've had nothing but positive people um, but these turbo meds they're pretty amazing so if you were to explain CMT in 30 seconds what would you say well to me it's a nerve disorder um, and for me it's below my knees uh, where I can't wiggle my toes um, sometimes my hands are impacted in colder weather but other than that for me personally it's just a it's more of a leg issue than mm. anything else I just don't want people feeling sorry for me because I can get around pretty good and if I need help I ask for help I, I think it, it just helps me be me um, just to be myself, just my everyday, continue to do things the way that I do them, the mm -hmm. best that I can. Mm -hmm. Let's move to the braggadocio part of the interview. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about your successes. You're obviously a very accomplished person. I wanna make sure we talk about that as well. Well, I've won a few club championships yeah. in my day. How many would that be? I would say at least 20 since 1993. Wow. Uh, I played at Rose City in, in Portland, and then I've won six here. I've, uh, I won a, a PNGA, it's the Pacific Northwest Golf Association. I won the lower bracket championship in 19, no, 2019. Um, I took my buddy, and this was huge, in 2019, 21 holes and she is one of the best in the state and that was fun um i just love the game it lets me be me every win is a proud win honestly because i'm overcoming uh, the challenge um, because some days are just more challenging when i get up i don't always know if i'm going to be more challenged than others some days the balance is just off and that becomes more of a challenging day so you know, I just love the game and I just want to encourage others to play. I feel like you bring a lot of positive energy um, along with it. Is there a, a, a kind of a mindful thing that you bring to the game or that's just your It's nature? very mindful, but it's also very, it's what I do, just in general. Um, I just try to be positive and every, everybody knows that. Yeah, I mean, golf is a mental game as well as a physical game, right? But no. negative just it affects everybody in your group if you have a negative Nelly. Mm -hmm. You know, someone's, oh, bad day today. You know, it's one shot. Move on. <laughs> so you can just let it go? Most again. of the time. But I don't, I try not to show it. You know, if I have a string of bad swings happening, because it happens, but you gotta let it go. Mm -hmm. You can't let it, like the disease, you can't let it win. So we are up here outside of Portland because this is Camp Footprint West. And so we run a camp for kids with CMT ages 10 to 18. And many of them are meeting CMT people for the first time in their life. And it's a transformative experience for them, but it's, it's a difficult disease. And so when you look back to your younger self and, and you think about our campers, um, any pieces of advice that you would give to them about um, their future and how to, how to approach life with CMT? I would always encourage them, if you have a dream that you want to play some, a sport, do it. There's so many ways you can still participate. 